Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Everyone and everywhere I go the now, here's Melinda. I have to sh- tell you, this lovely lady has been a friend for many years. We met in Las Vegas, and I just went to sh- see her show at Frank's Place at the Indian Wells Resort Hotel, and I was blown away. It was fantastic, and that her name is Patricia Welch. Patricia, welcome back to Talk of the Desert. Thank you, Melinda. I'm just such a pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, and you relocated from Las Vegas to the desert how many years ago? Wow, 10 years ago, my husband and I moved from Las Vegas, from one desert to another desert. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you really like the heat, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, we actually do. We actually prefer the heat well, over I, cold any day. I say it's hard to shovel sunshine. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Versus shoveling snow, you got it. Anyway, Patricia, I just wanted, I, mean, I was blown away. It's a one woman show at Frank's Place. No, nah, it should be called Patricia's Place uh, <laughs> at the Indian Wells Resort Hotel. How long have you been doing this show there? I've been there since October, and a uh, wonderful gentleman, Mr. Larry Capilato, featured me. He's there on Monday nights, and he featured me, and then the door opened up for me, So, and they gave me my own night, so I'm there Tuesdays, and I'm just delighted. To, they're a wonderful troop of people to work for. It's a beautiful hotel, beautiful hotel. But- I have to ask Patricia because she says it so beautifully. She is 100% Italian. I am. And you've got Frank DeSalvo there, and you've got the other gentleman's name is Larry Capilato. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's making me hungry, all these Italian names. Anyway, Patricia, tell me what's your real name, your your birth name. It's Patricia Anna Margareta Carpico. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I love it. It does. It makes me hungry for pasta. Aww. But you changed your name. A lot of singers have changed their names over the years, uh, especially Italians. And I'm not sure why, but why did you change your name? Well, I actually was cast as Tup Tim in The King and I with Yul Brenner, And Mitch Lee, who wrote Man of La Mancha, was my producer. He was the, the, the producer of the show. And he, when I was signing the contract, he says, you know, we're going to have to put you on the, uh, give, get you a stage name. He says, for your own protection, plus your name is too big to put on the playbill. So he says, why don't we just shorten it, come up with something. So I thought, well, Patricia Welch, short, sweet, you know, just like the grape juice, Patricia Welch. And it just, it, it worked. And uh, I've kept the name, you know, even though I'm married and, and I, my, mate, my married name is Dubarry, but, uh, but I kept the name and, um, you know, I've been performing with it ever since. Now, if I ever go back into opera, I might change it back. <laughs> well, <laughs> Although I don't know if I will. <laughs> and I knew you were a fabulous singer and we're going to get into your career, but I just realized, or you just told me, that you have an, uh, four octave range? I do. I do. I have four oh, octaves. Oh, goodness. I actually started trained classically. I was born in Ohio and raised in West Virginia. So I lived out in the country, really far in the country. And the nearest house was four miles away. And so I actually trained classically. But then I would have a lot of country roots, you know, with the Capitol Music Hall in Wheeling, West Virginia being right there. I sang backup. So I learned to sing country. I learned to sing pop. I learned to sing classical, you know, everything. And kind of, so I, I say I'm, I'm a chameleon because heads or tails, what do you want? <laughs> How old were you when you realized you had a, a, a decent singing voice? I was about eight years old when I started singing. Yeah. And, 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 and people would recognize it. And, uh, and I would start singing for public, you know, community events and so forth and just had the drive. So when was your first paid engagement? Hmm. I was in my, my, like right out of high school when I started getting paid gigs. And then of course I went off to New York city in my twenties. And that was a Cinderella story because when I went to New York city and I started auditioning and they have like, they have the unions and you have to be part of the union of course, normally to get cast into anything, but they had what they called 
a non-equity call and uh, they auditioned 6,000 people. Well, just a second, let's just explain what equity is the, the, the theater union. union for the th actual theater. Yes, it's the union for theater, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, now, right. now go, okay, so now so, you, you, got a, you got called for a part on Broadway. Yes, I, they had an open call and there were 6,000 people all, you know, between union people and non-union because that's you know they opened it to everybody and um, then they narrowed it down to 10 women for the role of Tup Tim and then they narrowed it down to six women and then Yul Brenner was in Japan Japan and they and Mitch Lee who he was you know involved in it he was the producer he said that he would have a final callback for everybody for the final six women that were considered for Tup Tim and so I got the role of Tup Tim after Yul Brenner came back from Japan, he made the final decision. Th this is a storybook story, isn't it? <laughs> this yeah, really it's a Cinderella story. No joke. It, it's I a mean, Cinderella story. I mean, you move story. to New York and you go on this this uh, cattle call. Yes. And you get chosen. I did. I did. I don't know. Maybe they felt sorry for me. Barefoot girl from West Virginia. I don't know. <laughs> This no. is what people dream of, Patricia. <laughs> Do you realize that? I mean, they think, well, it might happen to me. It happened to you. That's it, pretty amazing. It did. Back then, I looked very Euro-Asian, Euro you know, very, I had that European, but I also had this really Asian look quality. And I think that helped quite a bit for that role. Sure. Because Tup Tim is Burmese. She's the Burmese princess. And she's supposed to be set just a little apart from the rest of the women in the show. So she's a little different. And so I just kind of fit that mold, I guess. Well, so. I can't imagine the people in West Virginia thought little Patricia. Uh, <laughs> now, what was your name again? You're Patricia Italian? Anna Margareta Carpico. I love it. Uh, <laughs> that little Patricia got to Broadway, first audition, she's on Broadway. Yes, yes. They did a big story, you know, in my hometown, wow. of course. And wow. it was very exciting, very, very exciting. I would think so. First of all, I love moving to New York, but yes. then being cast in your first, was that your first audition? It was. It was. It was my first professional audit for a professional company. Yes. Wow. That and is then, amazing. But and it, I did 2,500 performances with Yul Brenner. I did actually four and a half years working with him. Wow. I was the last Tup Tim to work with Yul Brenner. How many years did King and I last on Broadway? Well, the last run was mm -hmm. six months. Okay. So we did four years on tour, and then we did six months on Broadway. Yul Brenner had cancer, and uh, he just couldn't go on anymore. But yeah. he fought all the way to the end. He right. really did. Right. I think performing kept him, you know, from feeling the pain. The, the drive to do that. Yes, and yes. And to please your audience. Yes, I think yeah. he didn't think about the pain mm -hmm. as he was performing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An absolutely amazing story, Patricia. Yeah. Have you, have you actually run into anybody else that has this kind of story? <laughs> no, I haven't. I, I have not. I, yeah, have you written your book? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, from, from there, after 2,500 runs on Broadway, shows on Broadway. Where did you go from there? You, you well, <laughs> I ended up doing the family thing. I got married, I had children, then I got a divorce, and then I got married again. And I settled in Las Vegas with my husband right now, who, who lives here with me yes. in the desert. Pete DuBerry, who's yes. a darling man. Yeah, he's a wonderful yes. husband. He's great. He's my knight in shining armor. <laughs> he is. There's no question about that. Yeah. So we moved to Las Vegas, and then that's when I actually co-starred with Robert Goulet there. And Robert, he saw me sing at a party, and he was so wonderful. He was across the room, and I was singing Summertime. And he comes walking in towards me, and he goes, wow, wow, right after I sang. Really? And he was like, he's wowing me. You know, yeah. this is Robert Goulet. Yeah, really. And uh, the next day, I got a call from his wife, Vera, and she said, I'm Vera Goulet, and Robert would like to know if you'd like to go on tour with him and be a part of his show. And she said, you would be doing two duets with him and two solos in his show. And so that's how that all started. So Patricia, you just start on Broadway and then you start singing with Robert Goulet. Come on, just let's, yeah, not, nothing small here. Everything's big. <laughs> you know, I never really shot for the stars, but it just happened. I was lucky, I guess, just in the right place at the right, right time. Exactly. In the right well, place. 
I adored Robert, and you ended up living across the street from him. Yes, and that was ironic, too, because I started working for him before he knew that I was across the street (laughs) in the same neighborhood. And he said, I'd like to have you come over for rehearsal. And then we scheduled the rehearsal. And then I, I... I went, I was leaving his house and I said, oh, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but I live across the street. And he was just like, he was amazed. (laughs) He didn't know, he didn't know that I lived across the street. It was just so funny. That is, oh, that is. Well, then you also worked for Wayne Newton. Yes. Mr. Las Vegas. And Wayne Newton was down the street. He was down the street, (laughs) yeah. But Wayne Newton, I got that gig a little bit differently. I actually had a friend who was a, uh, her name is uh, (gasps) Susan, and she's a wonderful ice skater. And um, she actually knew me and she said, I want to tell Wayne about you. And so she told Wayne about me and dropped off a promo packet because she was friends with him, worked with him. And so his wife, same thing, his wife called me up, Kat, and said that Wayne would like to feature you in his show. And so I worked with Wayne for about two years. Did you? And we did touring as well as um, the Hilton. We worked at the Hilton Las, in, Las in Vegas Hilton, which is yes. now called the Westgate. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I know you've had some smaller engagements along the way, but you you did start really at the top. Yes, <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's pretty yeah. amazing. But then you had the talent. I mean, if you got an eight a four octave ring, then <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So what brought you to the Palm Springs area? Well, my husband has five kids, and they all live here in the desert. Is Probably it? a lot of people might know Denise Duberry Hay. I'm sure they she's do. A, she's a philanthropist. She lives here in the desert, and she's done a lot of good things for people. And that's his daughter. Yes. So I'm very, very fortunate. He has five beautiful children, and I love them. They love me, and we all get along really well, which is very unusual. So, you know, for for a step stepmother, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But that's what brought us to the desert to be near family, to be near his family. So he's got all five. Five of his children that live here. That's that's pretty mm-hmm. fantastic. And they're like not that much younger than me. It's like boom, boom, boom. But I'm still older. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. So, okay. So how did, you've been working around the desert now for 10 years. Yes. And this opportunity at Frank's Place, or as I'm preferring to call it, Patricia's Place. Because <laughs> that actually sounds better than Frank's Place. Is that Patricia's oh, Place? Oh, I don't know. Because, yeah. well, if you walk, if anybody's never been to Frank's Place, it really is the right name for it. Because it is like a little rat pack Las Vegas supper club showroom. It's got the pictures of the wonderful nostalgia on the wall. Lucio Ball and Desi Arnaz were the original owners of the hotel. And so it, it is very fitting. And I'm so delighted to be working there because up till then, up to this past year, I was doing a lot of private parties, country clubs and so forth. But there aren't, maybe there's like two venues in this town that are more of a show Mm -hmm. like I think the Purple Room and Frank's Place, that you have an actual stage. You have, like, I'm up on a raised stage with the sunken in dining room. I have spotlight on me. I have speakers surrounding me. (laughs) So it's it's the next best thing to being on a, you know, on a real big stage. And actually, I like it better because it's more intimate. I can actually see my audience. I can go around and talk to my audience after my first hour set. I usually spend about 20 minutes walking around talking to everybody. And then I do the same thing again. I'll do another set and walk around and talk to everyone. Well, you were there. You yeah, saw I was there. And, how, I, how I do that. And you buy dinner. <laughs> I mean, you get dinner with yes. the show. Yes, so, yes you know, that's right. There's so. you, People can order cocktails and dinner, and it's it's there's entertainment there every single night of the week. And for my show, the cover is very low. It's only $5 a person for the cover. So that's amazing for that kind of you know it, it entertainment is. that you get. Entertainment, you get the show, you get the dining. And people can get up and dance, too. That's right, they can. Because they have a wonderful dance floor there. Well, off from the dining room. Absolutely. Now, okay, so your show starts at six o'clock on Tuesdays. And um, then I got there a couple of minutes before six o'clock, had the menu was served to me, and I got to order and then ate during your show, which is appropriate in this yes, particular situation. Yes, absolutely. And then this first set, you said it's an hour? Yes, one hour. 
and then I take a 20 to 25 minute break, talk to my audience, and then I get up and do another hour. And then I take another 20 minute break and then I, I close with maybe 15 minutes at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, it's really, it's just a delightful time and you're yes. so talented, Patricia. Thank I mean, I, really, I was blown away. Thank you. Now, even though we were in Las Vegas together for a lot of that time, um, I've heard you sing many times, but not in this situation. In fact, I, we were talking about Robert Goulet. You do have to tell the audience that you sang at Robert Goulet's funeral. Yes, I did. Yeah. And that was difficult, but I'm glad that Vera timed it strategically because what she did, what they did was they did this beautiful montage of Robert Goulet with every leading lady that he's worked with, at least four or five of them, singing If Ever I Would Leave You. And I don't know how they spliced it together, but they had it with Julie Andrews and, you know, all his leading ladies singing this song but right before that video montage was when I sang the Lord's Prayer and thank goodness it was right before that video because I don't think I would have gotten through it had it been yeah. after that. Yeah, I was there. I yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, Patricia, you were every a uh, Tuesday night at F Frank's Place at Six the Indy Wells uh, Resort Hotel. Mm -hmm. And what are the dates that are coming up? Um, it's every Tuesday until every Tuesday. I believe it's until the third week in May. Okay. I think that's when they close for summer. However, uh, there's weekend. Uh, they they close the week night shows, but the, they because they have every single night of the week there's entertainment there right. during season, but in the summer it's weekends only, and so I think I'm going to have a few dates in the summer too. I don't have that all worked out yet, but I think they're going to give me a few dates oh, here excellent. on Fridays and Good. Saturdays here and there, just a few, a few, so um, so I can still have a break vacation and be with my family and so forth and work up new music because that's the time that I can work up right, new music. Right, <laughs> right. Well, Patricia, as we're going to the break, we're going to play some video of you, of your singing, which is phenomenal. I wish I could even carry a tune. I mean, people at church turn around and laugh and point oh, at yeah. me. It's really horrible. Somewhere between here and heaven, it gets in tune. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Remember thank, that. Thank you for letting Remember me know that. that. Patricia, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, we'll watch this video with Patricia and and then we'll be back with her on the second half. Thank you. Silent and resigned. Imagine me trying too hard to put you from my mind. Recall those days, look back on all those times. Think of the things we'll never do. There will never be a day when I won't be. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. Well, I'm back with uh, Patricia Welch, who, you, if you were with the show earlier, you saw this wonderful video of her. But I got to have her say her, her birth name again, because I just love it. <laughs> Patricia Anna Margareta Carpico. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I just love it. But anyway, you really you have to go see Patricia at the uh, Frank's Place at the Andy Wells Resort Hotel on Tuesday nights uh, through uh, middle of May. Yes. And then hopefully she'll be able to come back a few times during the summer. So I'm it'll, be, it'll be on your website. Yes, on my website, which patriciawelch.com. And Welch is with a C-H, W-E-L-C-H. So it's like Patricia Welch. Like the grape juice. Yes, think of the grape juice, patriciawelch.com. So is that your favorite? drink <laughs> <laughs> if I water it down a lot of sugar <laughs> but I have on my website I have upcoming events and anything that I do in the desert that is for the public uh -huh. I'll post that on my website okay. so Frank's place obviously obviously is that right so it's on my website and you do a lot of private engagements here in the I do too. I do private parties so if anybody is interested for even I'll even go to your, people's home I have my own sound set up and I'll do like private dinner parties and birthday parties and and 
I love that. I love a one-on-one -on -one with people, you know? That's why I think why I love Frank's place so much. You can, you can see she's very shy and retiring. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so you're available for private parties, too. So I that's, am. So that's good, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. We cannot on Tuesday nights for no, the next not on five Tuesdays. weeks or so. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly. right. So, mm -hmm. um, now, you've got some interesting things possibly going on in the future for you besides Frank's place. Well, part of my bucket list, and I'm hoping that... You're too young to have a bucket list. <laughs> it will come to fruition someday, I'm hoping. But I, I actually met this wonderful... You know, the internet is so wonderful. Oh, it is. And I met this great guy. His name is David Todd Singleton from Lexington, Kentucky, of all places. And I met him online. And how I met him was he... Uh, sang a song in the uh, Grey's Anatomy, that TV oh, show. Yes, of course. And and, in, and it, my mother had just passed away, and that oh. song hit home. And it was about George, who was one of the doctors. His father was passing, and they played that song. And so I found him on LinkedIn, and I emailed him, and I just said, I love that song that you sang. Congratulations, you did a great job. Not knowing that he was a songwriter, he does a research on me and goes to my website and he says, by the way, I not only sang that song, but I wrote it. I'm a composer. And he said, and I love your voice and I want to write some songs and I want to see if you're interested. So now we are like 12 or 13, 14 songs later. Fantastic. Um, songs that are appropriate for movies and they're very cinematic. I mean, these kinds of songs would be fantastic for a James Bond film or there's one that I do it's called Fly Away that would be perfect for Avatar. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Dream big. Yes, I'm yeah. dreaming big. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that's what we're hoping. And we even cut a CD called Songs for the Movie, which we have that CD out. We're not really heavily marketing it. We just have it out so that hopefully it's a teaser so that maybe some of these mu music supervisors will hear it or executive producers of Moot Film and they'll say, never there's something here. And, mm -hmm. they, and really, trust me, these songs are phenomenal. Really phenomenal songs. Now, but the CD is available on your website. It is. Okay. It now, is. you have other CDs? Available? I do. I have another CD. I did a 46, it took me nine months to record it, but I did a 46 song CD project. 46? Yes. And it's called Cocktails, Dinner, and Dessert with Patricia. And there are songs from the 40s all the way into the like 80s, but mostly like the 70s and, 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 the, and the big band era as well, because that's the kind of music that I really love. So a little bit of Melissa Manchester, Barbara Streisand, you know, these are all hits from uh, Dionne Warwick, all the hits. Um, and, uh, and, and it's a lot of the stuff that, that's on that 46 song CD set, I sing at Frank's place. Yeah, well, like mm -hmm. I said, you're phenomenal. But um, how did you come up with the orchestra for all of this? Because that's expensive to do. Actually, there's a, there was a wonderful, I think he may have moved to Canada, but there was a wonderful pianist, Marty Steele, who came to my home, we plugged into the computer, he, we put the keyboard, plugged it right in, and he did the bass line. He did the piano line. He did the strings. He did the he did everything. There and made are it some keyboards sound, that are like that. He yeah. made it sound like an orchestra. And I took all those parts, all those components for every song into the studio. And then and then Michael Jacobson, who is also here in the desert, his studio, he put it all together. And then I sent we sent them uh, the final product to Los Angeles, the same guy that mixes Neil Diamond's recordings and a lot of Paula Cole, a lot of big artists, he mixed this whole uh, CD for me, mastered it for yeah. me. And then that's how that all started. So, but forty-six songs. Forty-six on songs. CD? Well, it's three C. It's a three CD oh, set. Oh, okay. Well, yes. then I understand that. Yes, because it's that's a three, you can't get forty-six. It's on a one box CD? set. Yeah. Yes, and it's that's also on my website. Mm -hmm. And I have a Broadway CD called Broadway with Patricia. That's just all Broadway. So of I course, did... the King and I music, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm sure people want to know: was it what was it like to work with Yul Brynner? 
Wonderful. Wonderful. He was, um, you know, I did the role of Tim and I did My Lord and Master, We Kiss in a Shadow, I Have Dreamed. I was the young romantic love interest, but I was given to the king as a present. And so he kind of circles around Tim, and, you know, he's like, am I to trust her or is she a spy? And I say, I am not a spy. My name is Tim. You are pleased that I speak English? And then he does this whole circle around Tim, and then he goes, and he goes off the stage. And there I am on the stage all by myself. And I look over to stage left. And there he, there he is. He's sitting in his chair. But, of course, the audience doesn't see him. Yeah. And I say, the king is pleased. And then I sing my lord and master. And he sat there every performance wow. and watched me sing that song. And then, he, of course, he comes back on stage. But uh, that was one of my songs in wow. the show. Mm-hmm. That must he was been, wonderful. That must have been so exciting. He was he was oh. great. Very very quiet man. Didn't say anything unless he it was something important to say. He was very intelligent. I think he was just extremely intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Um, yeah. We only have about three minutes left, Patricia. What have we not covered that you want to cover? Because I want to ask you about the song your husband wrote. Oh, okay. Yes, I was yeah. actually invited to sing for the nine eleven memorial. The one year. Uh, after 9-11, um, uh, well, it was a few months after 9-11, my husband wrote these words, and it just told the story of 9-11. We arose from the ashes of the towers in the sky. We're a proud, mighty nation, and we hold our heads high back from ground zero where we all shed a tear. And it just goes on, and it weaves this story. Well, when he did that, uh, and, he, and he's not in the music business at all, I just looked at this and I says, you know what? This is, I've sung enough lyrics of songs all these years. This is the makings of a song. Yeah. And so I hummed a melody. I went to an arranger and then the arranger came up with a, with the big instrumental. And, and then the airlines, I posted it on YouTube and the airlines, this was a one year anniversary, contacted me and said, we would like for you to come to Washington DC and sing this. So they flew me on a 777, which I've never been on a 777. And I sang that in Washington DC for the 9-11 Memorial. Wow, well, where, where did that take place? Was that, that was on, at the Washington the, Monu- uh, Monument. Monument. At the, wow. That was the airlines had their yes. the memorial right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. They had two memorials, but that was the one that I was singing at. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. You, you know, and you, and you the fa- wind, the wind was very windy that day, yeah. and all the flags around the Washington Monument were standing straight out. <gasps> really, it was a, it was a sight to behold. Wow. As I was singing that song, the flags and the people were waving their flags as I was singing it. So it was really cool. No joke. Yeah. Well, Patricia, thank you for sharing that story. Thank I almost you. brought tears to my <laughs> eyes. And your husband is just a doll. Thank you. Um, and then we want to repeat. We're going to Patricia's place. No, no, Frank's place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble with Frank DeSalvo, aren't I? Um, at the Indian Wells Resort Hotel in Indian Wells. Yes. And it's Tuesday nights from 6 to 9 p.m., order dinner, come see Patricia, and you'll be blown away by her. Thank you. So, yeah, and uh, more information at Patricia, Patricia Welch. I'll get it spit out. <laughs> PatriciaWelch.com. Yes. And that will update you. W E L C H. PatriciaWelch.com. <laughs> and then you, there, it looks like there may be some upcoming shows this during the summer. So I think so. Stay cool and come yes. to Frank's place. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So Patricia, bring your family and friends that are visiting. Yes. Oh, and it's and it's totally f- f- family friendly. Yes, it is. You know that's hard to say. Family yes, friendly. Family friendly. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Patricia, thank you for sharing your story and thank your life. Thank you very I mean, much. What Thank story you for having life me. Thank been. you. Thank, Thank you. you. And don't forget Frank's Place at Annie Wells Resort Hotel on Tuesday night. You've got Patricia Welch. Thank you, Patricia, for joining me. Thank and you. thank you, audience, for joining us. Thank you. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.